Hi, this is Odin. Today I'm having a look at... These are Legends. I don't really know if they go by the name Legends anymore. But anyway, Transformers Generations Legends Megatron with Chop Chop and Starscream with Waspinator. With my previous video of Bumblebee and Optimus for these Legends, I said that the box art was some of my favourite box art ever. Not so much the case with Starscream and Megatron. And... The art is pretty good, but uh, I think it's just that the models for these two figures aren't as good as what I would like them to be, so the box art has to reflect that. Starting off with Megatron, he really looks like the Gladiator Megatron. I'm not up to date with all IDW comics, but I do have all the hard covers, and Megatron looked like this briefly in some of those, so that's pretty cool. Um, as always, I prefer big toys of Megatron, and getting small toys is always a little bit of a disappointment. But having said that, this is a pretty good Legends figure. Uh, a normal Legend would only come up to about here, and a Commander would be a bit bigger, so I don't know if this is where we've settled on now for Legends, or if this is really even a Legends. I mean, it's sold as Legends, but I don't think it says it on the box. He's a bit poseable. You can see that he's got a pretty good range of motion. Ball joints for hips, ball joints for elbows, swivel at the neck, pretty stiff swivel there, uh, no waist articulation. His little friend Chop Shop is very nice. I like Chop Shop and I do have a original Chop Shop, although I've got a Beatrice Chop Shop, not actually a G1 version of it. I've got a pre-G1 version of Chop Shop and I would like a new I would like basically one of the fans projects version of Chop Shop, but I just haven't bought it because I can't afford it at the moment. This guy's pretty cool. That's his articulation. Hands can go out as well. I like this. This is good for a tiny little figure. I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, it's not showing up here on camera, but his eyes seem to be painted or maybe clear. I'm not sure, but there is some different looking visor on his eyes where I'm standing, but on the camera I can see that it looks exactly the same as the rest of the plastic. Maybe it's a trick of the light. To transform, you just sit him down like this, and he's a pretty decent looking beetle. That's also the weapon mode. Uh, if we pull out this little plug and bring over Megatron, it can peg into the arm, and it forms some kind of uh, brutal pincer weapon. And that also looks good. It's a surprisingly good little figure, all in all, these two. Now, the transformation. So I'm going to make his arms out straight, uh, head straight, unfold the legs right downwards like that. There's two hinges at the foot. I'm going to fold those feet in this way, bend the arms back, and then move them forward again. This bit uh, can move, and I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, rotate the elbows so that the fists are pointing inwards, like so. No, that's not like it, like this. Rotate the gun down so that it can go into the fist. Basically, that's the turret of the tank now. Lie him down. I need to do here. Bend that around. These are going to tap together at the back. And that's it. Nice little tank. Moving turret. This has a bit of travel, but not very much. If you want, you can grab Chop Shop and still tab him in on the top to make a beetle mounted, a tank mounted beetle. There's not much else to say about this. Uh, it is a cool little figure. Let's move on to Starscream. For a legend, Starscream is also very, very decent. It's not my favourite design of Starscream, but with what they had to work with, what they were basing it off, I think they've done a very good job of rendering Starscream in such a small scale. I don't normally collect legends. They always turn out much worse than what I would like them to. But in this case, I think that the combination of the comics that they were drawing their inspiration from and the slightly bigger size compared to a normal legend has let them do something really special. He's got balls for elbows, no waist, balls for shoulders, balls for hips, and just a single pin there in the knee. 
the foot has backwards and forwards motion and there's no head rotation because it's got a pin through the middle of it. You can pull Starscream's blaster or null ray, I'm assuming it's still a null ray off, and use it with other figures if you want, or point it in any direction you choose on Starscream. It's pretty good to have removable weapons for this scale as well. Now, here we've got Waspinator. Now, Waspinator can form a kind of gun. Uh, we just bend that down, move this forward, close it up a bit. Doesn't look very cool. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but the coolness comes in the fact that he is Waspinator, not that he's a gun. His gun is pretty poor, but just him being himself is what I like about that. So let's put him back to how he was. Now, the robot mode of Waspinator is pretty lame, I've got to say. He's got this huge tail section hanging down between his legs. But the bug mode of Waspinator, now that's what I like. I had been holding off on reviewing this guy for a very long time because I wanted to show you this Waspinator with the Deluxe Waspinator. But because BBTS haven't been able to ship my Waspinator uh, months and months overdue, I've had to give up on that idea. To transform Starscream, pinch his feet together like that, and then tap this little tab in the middle so it's sticking out straight. On the back side, grab the whole wing section, and it's a double joint. Get it so it's back like this, and then snap in the back of his uh, shins in there. We're going to flip the guns around 180 degrees now so that they're pointing forward. This part is a little bit tricky because the ball joints pop off a little bit too easy, but we want to untab that without popping the ball joints off. There's a tab in here where the forearm can peg in, tab in. Try that on the other side. That's both in. Grab the cockpit of the plane, fold that up over the head, and then the nose out of there. You can leave the front wheel, let's snap that in, you can leave the front wheel pointing out if you want, or you can force it back in like this. And that's it. That's his plane. Again, it's pretty good. I mean, it has got a robot underneath, but from above, it's a pretty good plane. At this size, it's it's acceptable, and I, I quite like it. Um, where's Waspinator gone? If you bend down that, you can peg in the wasp on top for whatever reason you want and transform him into his gun mode which looks a bit dumb anyway the only good mode in waspinator is the wasp so i leave him as a wasp for size comparison here's megatron with optimus and megatron's a little bit smaller i don't know why we keep getting megatrons that are smaller than optimus prime these days but it seems to be an ongoing theme this year so uh, not much smaller thankfully i would really like to see a bigger incarnation of this character to compare Starscream with Bumblebee, height-wise, Starscream should be taller, but I don't think the fault is with Starscream. I think that this Bumblebee is a little bit too big for the other three members of these this wave, and although I like Bumblebee, he doesn't fit as well with the other guys just because of his slight oversizedness. One thing I want to mention before I forget is that there's a stress mark forming in the plastic on this pin so maybe Starscream isn't going to end up being so durable in the long run. Comparing the four Minicons, we've got Jolt who I don't like much at all. He's very loose in the hand as a weapon and ugly in both modes so get rid of him. Waspinator who I like fine as a wasp, I actually do like it quite a bit as a wasp but his usefulness is limited to that so he would have to be my third favorite. Uh, next, we've got Chop Shop and Roller. Now it's very hard for me to pick a favorite amongst these two. I like these two the best. They're very good. But if I had to pick one as the best, I would go with Roller. And that's because Prime needs a Roller. Megatron doesn't need a Chop Shop so much. But they are both very nice little Minicons. And I do like these. I've enjoyed these and I can't wait to get more.
my final thoughts on these two Legends figures. Very good. I paid about $35, I think, plus shipping. That's more than I want to pay, honestly, with the two with the shipping added in. I would have been really happy if I saw these at uh, local retail and I would have picked them up. But um, I think with our crappy prices here, it might have ended up costing the same anyway. So I can't complain too much. I'm getting very perplexed that I cannot get the next two figures, the Swerve and Cosmos. I saw it at Robot Kingdom when it, it came out and I, I knew I should buy it, but I was really broke that week and I, I just couldn't swing paying an extra $35, $45 in my budget and I had to pass them up and looks like I've missed them for good now unless some miracle happens. So that's a bit sad, but Hasbro is definitely on the right track with these figures. I'm really curious to see what differences there will be between these guys and the Takara Tommy versions. Uh, there's been no listing for a Takara Tommy Cosmos or Smur Swerve yet, but I think if I see that, I'll jump on it immediately. Two good figures. I can highly recommend them. This has been my video review for Legends Megatron and Starscream. I'm Adin. Thank you for watching.